Greetings, brothers. This is Wayman Brown, creator of the EsquireProject.com, the self-enterprising site helping black men to eliminate barriers to personal achievement. As always, it's a pleasure to be with you. Be sure to check out the links within the description. Also, make sure you go over to the Facebook like page and show some love. And if you feel inclined to, I'll make sure I leave a link for the Cash App and or PayPal. And as always, I thank you for your support in advance. When I got into collecting fragrances several years ago, I wanted to be an ultimate fragrance connoisseur. And for me, that meant having this vast collection of all types of colognes. So after work or on the weekends, I used to go to Macy's and you know how they have the fragrance counters. I would just smell whatever that they had out there, especially if it was a new release. Um, I would listen to all the different fragrance reviewers online and all the different recommendations that they would have. And if I couldn't find something in my local area, sometimes I would just go ahead and blind buy certain bottles of fragrances that I never smelled before. And then I got into this thing where I thought that I needed to find a different type of scent for every sort of occasion and every sort of season, you know, from going out to summertime to wintertime and everything in between. Right. And eventually I got to this place where I thought that I should just own most of these fragrances that were considered classics. And to show that I had really reached this level of sophistication, I was trying to train my nose to find something appreciative about all types of colognes. So hundreds of dollars later, I noticed that I would usually have some type of buyer's remorse because the more my collection began to vary in range, uh, the more I noticed that I really didn't want all of the variety that I was actually building up. And I noticed that I kept coming back to certain types of scent profiles. And these were just the sort of fragrances that just seemed to do it for me overall, which were pretty much brighter, cleaner, and mostly just pleasant scents that pretty much just smelled good. Um, stuff that wasn't really too strong and were pretty much easy to wear in a lot of different settings. Now, every once in a while, even now, you know, I will switch it up and I'll throw in what I would consider to be like a guilty pleasure sort of a scent. Something that's a little bit unusual or maybe kind of experimental or maybe just something nostalgic because I might enjoy certain characteristics of that fragrance. But for the most part, you know, I just like wearing things that are easy to get along with and that are typically non offensive to other people. You know, I think a lot of times we complicate our world by trying to spread out our attention to too many people and on too many different things in life. And thus, we end up exercising too many options without really reaching satisfactory answers. And when this happens, it oftentimes results in a frustration of sorts a lot of times because we find that we're trying to force feed ourselves what we think we should have an affinity for instead of paying attention to what we really like and then narrowing our focus on what works for us. You know, in a different ways I think we can actually make our world larger by narrowing our focus and amplifying what's actually enriching to us and pretty much keeping our attention mostly on enjoying those things but I think that's a struggle for a lot of people because again there's so many options out here right so a lot of times people struggle with accepting the fact that certain things just aren't really for them certain people just aren't really for you certain situations they just aren't for you. And think about why. If you've been alive for 20, 30, 40, 50 or more years, that's plenty of time to allow all these different experiences from life to influence you to where you've mostly become concrete about certain things in different areas. You know, we've all lived our lives however we lived them based on how we were brought up or any other areas. And we've come to accumulate associations from all of those experiences that have steered us into whatever direction that has led to the sort of personality type that we overall have now. And so here we stand today as the sum total of the way that we processed all of this information over the years. I think that one key to embracing your taste um, that you've accumulated is to recognize the security that it gives you. And that's the security of having a sense of certainty. That sense of certainty where you keep coming back to certain things, it could be due to familiarity, 
It could be due to your personal assessment of your personality, to your evolving interest, to your changes in age, along with a host of other factors. And whether you purposely or subconsciously pick up on certain things, your formation has basically been shaped by everything that you've interpreted in life leading up to this moment. And that's something that I think you should be more interested in and find more interesting about yourself than take it as something that makes you feel out of place or like you're missing something. So the type of people that you're drawn to, the way that you like to dress, the types of foods that you like to eat, the things that you like to do, uh, all of those contribute towards defining your personality. And the other thing is also that they might be solving a riddle that's beneficial to you that you're not really paying attention to sometimes. Just like I gave the example with the fragrances, you know, I like stuff that's a little bit, you know, brighter and, and just kind of clean and that, that just smells good overall. But when I would try to get into these like heavier, darker scents, I noticed that those types of smells would generally like bring my spirit down. You know, they seem to kind of wipe out any type of zest for the day that I would want to have. And maybe what that was telling me was that I'm somebody who could use more of a mood booster throughout the day. So it may not be that beneficial for me to be walking around with a scent that smells kind of dreary and that kind of brings me down. I notice when it comes to cars, even though I'm into them very heavily and I like several of them, um, usually two things that stand out to me are exterior style and interior comfort. Those are two very important things. So usually, you know, I pretty much like luxury cars, even though I like some body on frame SUVs as well. But no matter what cars come out, no matter how many options they have, just to give you a little bit of insight into my taste, I seem to always be drawn to one particular sedan almost more than any other car. And that is specifically a Saab 95 that came out between 2006 and 2009. And I like the black on black. Now, even though they stopped making Saabs like years ago, I think 2010 or 2011, Every time I see that car online or think about it, I just picture like that's a Wayman car right there. You know, it's understated. It's not flashy. It's straightforward. It's minimalistic. What you see is what you get, you know, personality type with that car. It just comes across as something that's comfortable in its own skin and is not really trying to keep up with everything that everybody else is doing or appease to every type of driver out there. And after a while, when you start noticing certain things within your style, you'll start to see certain parallels across the board to where you can start to generalize your taste. And what that helps you to do is to start organizing your attention and your energy on being mindful of things that are going to check the boxes for you when you're looking for something. I took this cross country trip uh, several years ago, and I think I counted like 38 states that uh, I went through with my family when we took this trip based on the way we traveled. Um, and certain places didn't really appeal to me as much as I thought they would just from, you know, hearing about them. But I did notice that there were certain areas of the country and certain places that just kind of resonated with me a little bit more. Um, when I went to Virginia, uh, when I went to Rhode Island and the Pacific Northwest, uh, uh, excuse me, Pacific Northwest, rather. Um, and mostly like the Portland and the Seattle area, those were places that seemed to appeal to me the most. And what I started to do is I started to, you know, kind of figure out why I like those places more than all these other places throughout the country. And what I began to notice is that when I started thinking of places that I would consider to be outside of my hometown, as, you know, as far as like a place to relocate in the States, um, I like places that are walkable. You know, I don't like places that are really like heavily car dependent. Um, I like places that have unique architecture, a lot of rich history, a lot of culture. And I really appreciate beautiful, natural surroundings um, and just the overall relaxing atmosphere. So I like places that have some sort of unique charm to them overall. I don't really need to, you know, try to go to where it's popping or where everybody turning up. I'm a little bit too laid back for that, you know, so I like more of a low key vibe than a constant party for the most part. You know, I, I like being able to walk down the street and have conversations with shop owners and to be able to be kind of leisurely. And just enjoy the overall atmosphere of where I am. But ironically, I do like the hustle and bustle of NYC, even though it seems kind of contrary in some way to the way I describe the other cities and places that I like in states. 
I'll give you another example. Um, when it comes to celebrity women, whom I found attractive over the years, is much different than a lot of the popular names that are out there. So, you know, Cardi B, Rihanna, Beyonce might even sound blasphemous to some people's ears, but I don't really find myself admiring them. And it's not that I'm trying to be different just for the sake of being different or to go against a status quo. It's mostly because I noticed that they usually have to present themselves in a very hypersexualized way publicly. And that's typically a turnoff for me. You know, also, I don't really like aggressive personalities in women. I don't like managed type of women at all. So even when I look at Instagram models, again, an area where I'm usually not impressed. I don't like women who have manufactured looks to their aesthetic or where it looks like they went and got their body done or, you know, where they wear the big old broom bristle snuffle up against eyelashes where you could turn her upside down and sweep a patio. I, I don't like that. You know, I don't like loud mouth women, chicks who got smoke for you or you got to peel back like 15 layers of nigga energy just to get them to be welcoming. I don't want to see tattoo poems or I love 12 gauge Mike or, you know, always yours, loud pack Larry. I don't like stuff like that. So I've tended to notice celebrities along the lines. I'll just give you a few names. Um, if you remember the MTV personality, Ananda Lewis, back in the day in the 90s and the early 2000s, or uh, actress Robin Lee. She hasn't done a lot of major roles, but she's done a lot of roles over the years. Um, or singer Melanie Fiona. Those are women who I found a little bit more attractive from a celebrity standpoint. So even though, of course, I've never met these women, I'm attracted to the way that they generally present themselves, which is having an ultra feminine, girly girl type of vibe, you know, with a touch of exoticness, uh, exoticness rather to their melanated faces. I like nice, warm, friendly, you know, chicks who wear heels and bake cakes. I don't like brass knuckles. I don't like girls who roll blunts. No, thank you. I'm good. And even usually when I have interactions with women uh, who have that more aggressive personality type that I don't really find appealing, I find that usually it's best for me not to even socialize with them much more than I need to because I'm not really going to enjoy talking to them that much or being around them. And that's the whole thing about embracing your style and your taste in general. What you're looking for is a good fit based on your overall tonality as a person. Now, of course, all things are going to take effort to really be compatible for you. But style is mostly about finding what's complementary to you. Enjoy your style, too.